you tell us something about the old days in, in Barramundi when your your father was still alive and when you were operating the blacksmith shop? Can you tell us something about those old days? I know it's a good while back. Ah, well, that was indeed. Well, your, your, your father was a blacksmith and a piper as well. Ah, some I learned of, you know. The pipes that he played with, Scotch pipes. Oh, the, the Highland pipes? Ah. Was there much difference between the chanter and, and the Highland pipes and the Yulun pipes? Oh, there's a lot of difference. On the Scotch chanter, you see, we've only the one octave. On these Yulun uh, pipes here, we have two octaves, you see. Uh -huh. Well, who's, who's the first exponent or the first player on Yulun on, on pipes that you heard? Was it some of these travelling people, I think? Some of the travelling people, like the Dorans or something like that, was that the first people that you ever seen playing Ulian pipes? Oh, uh, first uh, I ever seen, I was uh, Felix Doran. Felix Doran? Ah, uh, he, mm. he came in every year, you see. Yes. In the caravans. And uh -huh. Felix was the man that used to tell me and to pick these up, you see. Yes. Did you ever uh, meet Johnny, the late Johnny? I think I did now. You know, when you look back, you know, it's a bit of hell sometimes, oh. you know. But I, like after my father died, you see, I was walking away to myself, and these men came round as usual. Yes. I got to know them better, you know, and I think I did meet Johnny at some time or other, you know, but Felix, he used to stay with us up around the Antrim side here. Uh -huh. Well, money here, he'd have stayed for months, you know. Yeah. What sort of jobs would you done for him, Sammy? For Felix? Aye. Oh, I hooked his wheels for the, the caravan and... Ah, uh, sure, he's mayor, you know. Even when he was uh, as far away as Derry there, they got word from him, you know, they make a set of shoes for the mayor, he brings such in the time. Uh, uh, then they always, but at that time, I didn't really understand, like, uh, anything about. I never saw these pipes, you know, but I'd heard them on the uh, afternoon radio, you know, yeah. in that time. And uh, it was uh, the time of the after the war they were having celebrations. Uh -huh. And I had out my scotch pipes at the road and foot there where we were all rare down there in Barramone and uh, Felix was there too, you know, having the bonfire. Uh -huh. So he had to blow on my pipes and it says to me, he said you should get rid of them and take up the alien pipes, you know. Uh -huh. He says, I think you've got the idea and so if he, yeah, I thought about it, you know, and then later on in years it's, I wrote one time to Leah Rolson, a man I heard often on the Arthur radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, he made me a big bill of some chanter, and I had a tutor that Leah had published, you see. And from that, I learned myself. Uh -huh. The thing I know about these, I picked it up myself, you know, and that's not too much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you introduced me to Felix, and Felix is dead himself. And ah, uh, ah. He seemed to have been a great, great, oh, great fingers uh, and great, great exponent of them. Ah, uh, but they always talked about his brother. He said, ah, uh, he thought his brother was great or piper and or ham, you know, and talked to me about him and all, do you know? Well, they said that Johnny had four hands, like the things that he could do was nothing ordinary, you know? Ah, uh, well, some sort of, I've read a lot about Johnny Doran, you know, mm -hmm. and I began to realise now how great he was, yeah, you know? Yeah. And my, the opportunities I must to these fellows oh, well, yeah. at that time, you see, I don't uh -huh. know, really. Well, would you say there's... Uh, you've talked to me in years gone by about McCrimmons and all these great Highland men and the Peabrook and so on. So, do you think, is there, is there really much difference between that and what the Ulean pipe stands for? Is it, you know, is there really much difference between the Highland pipe, in other words, and what you're playing now, is there, in the chanter? Well, I, 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 that's a very, a question just I really am no that far advanced to answer, but I've been reading a lot, you know, about this, uh, these type uh, scales on the chanter and slack scales, and on the scotch pipes too, mm -hmm. they have them tight scales too, only, I'm only beginning to realise it now at my age, you know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think really they are, I think they're, only you need some more, like, some of the old masters to explain the whole thing to you, mm -hmm. you know, like, really, that's my... Like, I'm, I'm a self-taught pupil. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah, for the beginning, like, my old, the old man learned me to scale in the blacksmith shop, you see. Uh, that big of family or people, you know, that he says to me, well, you'll have to look for yourself, and I've been looking at her since. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Well, here, <coughs> for all that, would you, would you play something that, of your own choice, some of the old tunes that you, you learned years ago? Jig, what do you call that? Rumbling Pitchfork. Rumbling Pitchfork. Ah. <laughs> I'd say that was a very ancient tune. I think that was, uh, I learned it from a tutor of the Irish Fadler, you know. Mm. Like, and my dad's think there's only one man I would say, like, there was any of these old tunes. Old well, time going by, as a fiddle player, mm -hmm. Joe Holmes, oh, you know. <laughs> it's the only man ever I could like, get any of the old tunes from, right. you know. Well, could you talk about some of the older musicians, the ones that have have, have gone, uh, like of Jimmy Keeley and people like that that ah. you often talk about? Ah. Jimmy and you and Joe had some great sessions in years gone by, down in Charlie Kelly, Ken you know, down in Charlie Kenny's there, and ah. right at the pub. Ah, there. Jimmy Keeley. Aye. Ah, oh, he, Jimmy's a great traditional player. In fact, he could play any type of music at all, you know, mm -hmm. like, but... And the pub there, you know, like, the boys wanted to hear such and such in the tune, you know, mm -hmm. the way they... Well, I heard you playing an old reel, I don't know that you remember now, the Heathery Breeze, and I think it was one of Jimmy Keeley's ah, specialties. Ah, uh, it was a great favourite of Jimmy's, ah. Uh. I'll you play it for you anyway. Good. <laughs> Tell me about your teaching the son when he was very young to, to pipe, and uh -huh. uh, you're using this old scale, the sort of the mouth music. Can you tell me something about that 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 style of, of, of teaching music uh, orally, outside of the, the notes, the, the, the staff? Can you tell me something about that? Oh, well, that, that's in the Scotch pipe. Well, I think it's a plain. Uh -huh. well, what, what, uh -huh. what way would you have taught somebody a tune that way? You know the. Well, that simply be the way, like in ancient times, you know, it was all talk from the mouth here. And then up to, I think, about 1800 or so, some of the Campbells in Scotland put our music and the stuff, stuff and the station, ah. Mm -hmm. Well, like, when you're teaching the pipes, you see, or the Scotch pipes, I should say, ah, the practice chanter, you can't whistle to a young lad, you know, or anything like that, so you have to. Like, sort of imitate the sound, you know, like, tuck them, tuck them, and so on, like yeah. that, you know, like, to 
No, tum tra tum tra katram hi tra hum. Tri de tri de tra hi tra hum. Tra dum tra da dum di de dum. Tri de tra di de da drum. They explain them, you know. Yeah. So you you, you wouldn't have you couldn't have done that really by by notes. You had to demonstrate it. Aye, aye, had a demonstrate what he was doing aye. with the thing, right? Yes. You see, a very difficult thing to do, you know, that's the great uh, work in the, in the pipes, and the Scotch pipes is the grace notes are, are described as embellishments and uh -huh. some of these other uh -huh. instruments, you know. Uh -huh. But that's the main structure of the Scotch pipe, and it's the grace note making. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was never really under a teacher, you know, I just learned yeah. myself from books yeah. there, yeah. but. Now this younger generation has a better chance now with more money and, <laughs> and we can get to hear the good players, you know. Yeah. Like, never I was a young lad, you know, they were letting money around, you know. Yeah. There wasn't much radio or television. The only pipes I ever heard was some in them days or musicians along the street, you know. Aye. Uh, you were telling me one time about a musician who used to come around like, for the fairs, I think the Lammas Fair, and for some of the old fairs in Ballamoney. An old boy that played a whistle, you said, you had a great style, you had, had, had an oil filler at the end of the whistle. You tell us something about some of these old street musicians that used to come around before the National Health stepped in and, and, uh, and stopped these boys coming onto the streets. Oh, uh, why? Well, that's really the first time whistle player I ever heard in the main street, that was. That wee man, I think it was Simon Doherty, he called him. Uh, for and, uh, yes, some for in that direction, it's a big... It was a, wasn't a great day anyway, but it, that's uh, what's described now as a clerk's tan whistle. Mm -hmm. That's the oil fellow, you know. <laughs> and I don't know, I think I had tuppence or something I gave him at that time with a lot of money, you know. And I got him to play me a blackboard, you know, and I, uh -huh. I heard James Keeley out in the violin, you know. That's really the first tan whistle player. Then there was uh, John Fee the Fiddler from Armoy. Oh, Armoy, hi. Uh, he was there every Thursday, you know, like, Big market and small market and everything was known. The town or higher and fair, yeah. and I got you found with a fee uh -huh. playing. Well, what do you think? What killed out all uh, those old musicians? Do you think that the, the national health scheme and all this, this benefits that people get now, unemployment benefit, did that kill a lot of the street musicians and singers that used to come around the fairs and? Her? No, I don't think it did that uh, because you're not allowed now to play in the street and left money around, you no. know. Set your permission from the police or mm -hmm. from the guard, you know. Yeah. Oh, them, them boys were great and the old singers. And there's a big man, Smith, I call him. He sung all them old songs, you know, mm -hmm. and along the street, a penny a piece in the sheet. Uh huh. You sold the ballot? That's right, the sold the ballot. That's how he mm -hmm. left that. Uh, mm. How's that, Liam? Is that it? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we have one more. Can you hear me, sir? Okay.